Hamon and Tumba, a new city for a green age. In order to provide sufficient power to Pomon and Tumba, we will use solar power, hydroelectric power, and power from waste incineration. Our hydroelectric power plant consists of the CGen Tidal Stream Generator, which extracts energy from tides to generate 1.2 megawatts between 18 to 20 hours per day per turbine. We plan to install 15 to 20 turbines along the river in the far north and east regions. The main plant is located in the middle of the island. Tidal turbines are the cheapest and least ecologically damaging power source. Thus, we opted not to use dams to avoid possible flooding and wa water flow in two directions. Our photovoltaic solar power station's panels take up 3.5 square miles to generate a maximum of 200 megawatts under optimum conditions. It is located in the far west. Our waste incineration plant uses waste heat recovery to generate emission-free electricity. It generates 550 to 750 kilowatt hours per ton of waste. It is located in the far north coast. Our city system of power distribution utilizes the following. One step up transformer per power plant, one step down transformer per distribution substation, overhead power lines, elevated distribution substations near outskirts to prevent damage from flooding, transmission lines outlining outskirts, transformer poles are concentrated in residential and commercial areas, smart meters are near substations to monitor service continuity and identify outages. The main source of water will be the freshwater lake Loch Tumba. The water will be pumped from the lake into the water treatment facility, where, will, where it will be purified and prepped for distribution. The water will be sent through underground pipes and stored in six main water towers. All wastewater will be pumped back to the water treatment facility to be re-purified and reused. After the purification process, the water will be safe for drinking, bathing, etc. Here you can see the main water and sewage lines. All other pipelines will run off of these main lines. The two buildings are the water pumps and the purification system, and the water and sewage run parallel to each other. The six blue circles are the water towers, and this is our water infra main water infrastructure. Our waste disposal system is modeled after the system in Sweden, where they actually import other countries' trash because it is so efficient. Household waste is burnt in an incinerator, and the energy produced from that is used to power the city. The ash that remains is 15% of the original weight. Magnets and filters separate the metals and ceramics to be recycled. The smoke is a non-toxic combination of CO2 and water. The CO2 is filtered out, and the water is used to fill abandoned mines. For transportation, there will, there will be a grid-style layout for all major roads and highways. There are highways all along the outskirts of the city and along the entirety of the coastline. The public transportation system will be mainly buses. Buses are the easiest system to expand and are much cheaper than trains. In addition, the flooding by Loch Tumba during the rainy season makes building both the above ground or underground train stations even more costly. There will also be a large paved, a small paved airport in the outskirts of the city. Since there are only 27 paved airports in the Democratic Republic of Congo, having one can make a city a hub for transportation. With the initial population of 25,000, we would start with one major hospital that would grow into three by the time we reach the 100,000 population mark, with various urgent cares and small individual practices scattered throughout the city. With the police, we would start with one police station and move into two or three more, usually placed in the center of the city, and it would work in districts.
When it comes to fire, the city will have one minor fire station with the initial population. That fire station would grow into a main one and then have two main fire departments by the time it reaches the 100,000 population mark. With schools, the initial student population would be about 5,000 students, so we would only need two initial schools. However, by the 100,000 population mark, there would be 15 to 20,000 students, with 10 to 15 elementary schools, 3 to 4 middle and high schools, and perhaps when it gets large, we would count for a college. At first, people will live relatively close to where they will work. As the city expands, most families will move farther away and create suburbs. Housing can be built near the wharf, but on stilts just in case the lake floods. We decided to have our commercial area in the middle where it can be expand as the population grows. It is where the police, fire department, and hospital is located. The industrial areas are near the lake far away from the downtown area to allow expansion on both fronts. The wharf allows for small markets to expand as well as a good place for people to socialize. The city is by a nature preserve and there are many conservation efforts happening in the area. Consequently, we need to be aware of the environmental impact of our city. So, almost all of our energy is produced through renewable means, such as hydroelectric turbines and solar panels. We chose tidal turbines as a source of hydroelectric power because they have much less of an environmental impact. Our waste incineration plant serves two purposes. It creates energy and removes the need for large landfills that can produce methane and damage the environment. Here is a full map of the city showing all the main systems, including zoning, buildings, water, power, and roads, to see how everything interacts. As you can see, our city is well thought out and takes into account local weather, geography, flooding, and is, and is almost entirely green. It is a modern city that looks to the future, and we hope you consider our project to be the best. Thank you for watching. Good night.